We will command that only the most divine light shine down upon you at this time and the greatest good be present here. It is such a joy and an honor to be in the circle with you this morning. This work that you have just done is as revolutionary as all of the work that we as a party have brought forth. There is something below and beyond the intellect that has such a great power and that is the body. Our work with you for all of these years and that will still continue on until you're with us has been about rearranging your operating system. In particular, this time on the planet, and today is June 25th, 2024, there is so much going on, on so many levels. Some of it is intentionally designed to demagnetize you in the physical lens. In the whole operating system, it's perfect. Whoever, why ever, however you got here at this time to be subjected to the trials and tribulations of being human is the mystery. Your faith has to be in that you're here, and so you intended to be here, that there is an opportunity right now that you knew on a soul level would be happening at this time. And so you chose to come here at this time so that you could be someone who goes through it and helps transform it. So on a macrocosm of the world and the energy right now, your microcosm is just as important We've been saying this since we began our legendary journey of testing this theory that if every human would do this shadow work, if every human would understand that every time they're separated from their intellect, they project onto their planet and it shows up and manifests somewhere, whether it's a war, or homelessness, or conflict in the streets, or conflict with your family. It manifests. So now, the excitement that this theory is catching on, that this theory is becoming not just a conspiracy theory, but an actual science, like is often true when new ideas and new perspectives come onto the scene and rattle the old not to replace them, but to integrate their wisdom into the new. And that's why you are here, all of you. Our job, not only to feed you information, but to hold a space in non-physical that you can't see as well right now because your system is so engaged in creating a human body and having a human experience. When you're not programming or focused on creating a human body in a lens and having a human experience, you're still here. It's just that it's much more free flowing. It's much more, there's much more energy because you're not expending it, creating the physical world. So we appeal to that part of you who is still here in the non-physical, but understand that your human minds are so stubborn. They're patterned, they're programmed by civilizations of in the making of how humans operate. And you're breaking that cycle. You're breaking it by not allowing yourself to be governed by the patterns. So for those of you who are dealing with physical healing, your body heals, will your mind allow it? Will your mind continually nag you with overthinking? Will you continue to look outside yourself for the source of your emotion, 
for your creation? Will your intuition be separated from your intellect? Those are the most important questions you should have in a day. Everything else will fall from there. And that doesn't mean that there's no bad knees or car accidents or suffering that gets manifests. It just means you must have the long view. You must know that you are here to step by step create a different world through making those decisions through your body. So if there was one question we would ask you to be aware of in the course of a day, it would be, what are those stressful thoughts that are shortening your longevity? They might seem like simple thoughts that you've had maybe your whole life. I'm not good enough. I should be doing that. I should be doing that. I should be doing this. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with her? But those are the ones. There's no getting around it. This is an intricate, intimate self-knowledge that you're going into. And you have to be willing to revolve your focus and work on self and find meaning and become someone not separated from the source, not blocking the truth. So what part of your ego needs to surrender? And then how you handle that will be your creation. Do you give your ego more to do that has to do with being aligned to compassion? Do you meditate more to get out of your head, to get out of the thinking, even for a little while? Whatever you need to do, that's where it begins. And that's where it will be reflected onto the planet in the macrocosm as well. So this meditation that we've just given you is excellent for aligning both hemispheres. And uh, the hippocampus has been a beautiful addition to conversation lately because it is the interface between the physical and the non-physical. It's where the point of where that energy enters into the physical body to disperse into the map of your body. Very important point. Scientists in this day and age know it. They understand the power of that point. All the more reason for you to take control of remagnetizing your body your intellect, your intuition, your emotion, to work to bring it into great balance. And know that human life has always been ugly. There's always been death and suffering. There's always been evil. There's always been these things that you're dealing with now. How are you going to transform your energy coming from the source, compassion, God, through you? What are you going to do with it? And we hope we can inspire you to rise high to the occasion and dedicate yourselves to compassion as the creative life force that you're going to master in your own body. We would at this time open for any questions or conversation anyone may like to have. Thank you so much for for that. And I enjoyed so much the meditation and look forward to doing that more. This remagnetizing just makes a lot of sense to me and I I felt even already doing uh, this meditation. So we're so the idea is that we're staying balanced electromagnetically, like about the uh, EMFs that are not natural. Are they what's demagnetizing us? Is this something that we can work with, like we're in our own homes? 
like I have this iPhone that supposedly has these magnets and that's even dangerous warning people about with pacemakers. And do I need to worry about this, having that in my possession or, or should I need to do something about that? There's two things to say about this. One is that, yes, there are levels of waves that will harm you. Also, you have to consider what is doing the separation. It isn't just one thing here or there. Think back to, say, Chaco Canyon, BC, sometime in the BC, when the indigenous were migrating from the north to the south. There were no waves except everything that was natural. What was natural, however, was coming from the sun, and the sun has those waves. So when humans started to discover sending things through the airwaves unnaturally, so to speak, the, the human voice, you have no idea the bombarding that you are under compared to what if we took you back to Chaco Canyon, your ears would probably bleed from the silence. So yes, there are things that you might want to protect yourself from. And it's sort of a drop in the bucket, but you should do it. And this is this ad adaptation that we're talking about is that if you remagnetize yourself, you have an, an immunity to those things because demagnification is what it wants to do to you, so to speak. Even that, not that the instruments themselves long to demagnetize you so that you'll start to age more and splinter and be more malleable to the powers that be, but that you yourself are remagnetizing yourself, putting yourself back in place. It's sort of like people who like to go out and play sports and then they have to take a day to rest, maybe. You never have to worry about anything, though. Yes, because I don't want to stress over it. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. So again, can I just repeat what uh, you had said before to clarify? The hippocampus is the interface between the physical and the spiritual. Is that what you said? Non-physical. Oh, the non-physical. Okay. So is there, are there ways to, uh, besides staying stress-free, uh, anything else to help us with that hippocampus? There are basic tasks every human should take care of in terms of being out in nature, being out in the sunlight. The sunlight is incredibly healing and calming. To be in water, to find yourself submerged in water, to loving each other, to making sure that you are not being subsumed by propaganda, the propaganda of your intellect. So these are some of the things that you can do. There's also those who are into food medicines, there's always things that the body loves for that, to be able to research that and look into word that's on the street these days, look in that direction. We're just very excited that you yourselves are taking this realization, this deeper level of your own connection to your deep subatomic electromagnetic energy. That's really what we want you to focus on. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. Yes, thank you so much for everything always. I'm wondering when you're talking about longevity and aging, we have reached already a certain age 
What could we do to reverse some of the aging signs and aging effects on our bodies and our minds to to reach an even longer longevity? Because we we don't want a longevity where we look like eighty year olds or hundred year olds. So we would like a longevity where our bodies are fit and nice and beautiful and lovely, and our minds too, of course, and uh, and our hearts even more. What do you recommend there? Again, kind of a two pronged answer in that. It's all about being a child from the inside out. And that is something that is an experiment. This is an experiment you're engaged in, the experiment of extending your lives, of looking younger, longevity. It's not a guarantee. We haven't predicted ourselves this in some laboratory experiment, and we we think we predicted, we, we defined prediction as going into the laboratory with an idea that we wanna create and then experimenting to see if it works. And then after you see if it works or not, you know if it can be a prediction. Our focus has been on the electromagnetics of it upward as far as what to do about how to have your skin younger. We don't know specific things that would address skin or address not graying hair or address those things, except what we're saying is that by bringing back the child-like innocence, which is also kind of a humility and not humiliated, humility that you don't know certain things, that you don't know, not like there's something wrong with you, but like you're a, a child learning. You don't know, you're excited to learn, but you realize you don't know, so you have to have this humility to be guided, now mostly by your intuition, but that's it. It's the ego who needs the humility, the ego that needs to reduce the stress because the ego is what creates the stress in the first place those kinds of inner root work will lead then to the answers but we would say that you've seen people in real life who might have been old looking old and tired and decrepit and had some life-changing experience and they came out of it a new person maybe they lost a lot of weight or they they found a, a passion that hadn't driven them and they actually look younger that's the focus that we think makes for the best longevity because intuition will tell you intuition will guide you if you're going to be a child you're not going to judge if you're beautiful how you're beautiful or not if this is beautiful and that's not beautiful you're not going to judge that. You're going to find beauty in everything, whatever it is, some kind of beauty. You're not going to have a expectation of yourself. You're going to be so much in the moment, so much like that child in present moment. That's leading to those places. Yes, that makes perfect sense. So I think judge, a judgment Realism and and expectations are in itself in themselves aging factors too yes because if you think about a child who ages into an adult that's what they're taught they're taught how to judge they're taught to hate and then they get old so stay like that child yes thank you so much thank you Hi, Jojo here. In keeping with your comments about being as a child, that's what came to me too as Heiko was asking her question. For me, that means playing, having fun, being joyful and laughing as much as possible, which some people view as kind of um, not acceptable for people 
my age, <laughs> if you will, but many others uh, love it and and join in when you're like that, when you're upbeat and when you're having fun. Uh, so unlike Debbie, I used to read only nonfiction like she's reading. Now I read mostly fiction and I'm currently rereading a series about an 11 year old girl, Flavia de Luce who is so funny. Any book that makes me laugh out loud is one that I love and will reread. And she's all about the natural world and, and the chemistry of it and understanding people, people that are alive, people that are dead. She's always finding bodies and solving mysteries. So that's one way that I stay um, happy, joyful, is reading things that make me laugh and make me take a a brighter view of things. Anyway, just my comments. Thank you. This is Linda. I felt so much uh, going on during the meditation in both hemispheres of my brain when we were at that point. Also, I really felt the energies. Thank you so much for this meditation. I had done similar in the past, but not quite this way. And I had forgotten what that feels like. So I'm very, very thankful for that. I would like to ask, with everything that is going on with me physically at this time um, and emotionally, am I on the, I guess, the right path or the correct one? I'm feeling very connected uh, with Yeshua right now and feeling like some of what's going on in my body is uh, a lot of pain that's coming up from possibly past lives. Yes, indeed. It is a lot of pain from not just past lives, but this life. There is a an abundance of timeline healing that's going on all over for everyone. And the way that timeline healing manifests as individual for each human body yours coincides with the loss of people and physical illness and physical pain some other people are being challenged with mental health issues some other people are being challenged with other kinds of what you might call suffering that's all part and parcel of why you're here and we would suggest, our suggestion would be that it is your relationship to yourself right now that is the most important, your relationship to your shadow side, your relationship to uh, your operating system. And these are huge, lofty, evolutionary things that you're undertaking with that awareness. There is no need or room for you to have to be in question you've taken in so much information in your life about spiritual concepts about spiritual experience you've had empirical spiritual experience in your life and we see you becoming your own guru you're not looking to us you're not looking to any other spiritual guru, not that you're not inspired by things, but that you become your own authority where you know if you're on track and if you're not on track, then you, then you make the necessary adjustments. That's really what you're working for. That's the hardest track of all because there is no other authority but you. You have to either you know, when somebody, the, the idea of teaching your children to thrim, swim by throwing them overboard, it's as if you're floundering on the surface sometimes, trying to keep afloat. Now, if a child is thrown in to the water and they don't learn to swim, they drown. But what happens when you get thrown into the water and you don't know how to swim because you've never been in the water, there's a energy, a intention, an, an intentional intention. It, you might flop around for a while, waving your arms and legs, afraid, but 
at some point, compassion, intuition kicks in to move this arm to reach out and, like a stroke and to move that arm. And then the realization that if you fill up your lungs, you flow to the surface. The realization that if you try to breathe in water, you can't. So there's all kinds of learning experiences that then lead to that learning to swim. But this is your decision. It's not as if some something or someone or you're tied to some past life. Yes, it's true. Past lives are coming up through you. So our childhood trapped obsessed emotions and trauma patterns, and you're feeling the earth. As you can see by our meditation, you are all part of the earth. So you're feeling the whole earth. And there's a lot of human beings who are waking up and being aware, including yourself. So there's a lot going on, but it's a sticking to a daily uh, ritual that keeps you in the truth of who you are, that you know, you know that. You can intellectually tell us so much, and now you're just integrating that into the alignment of compassion. And it never stops in the earth plane. There are times that when you're in your pattern, when you're so disciplined, you know how it is. If you say you needed to lose weight and you procrastinated halfway through, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I doubt myself, I can't, I can't, am I never track record? And you get just so sick of yourself that you go, this is nonsense. I have to be more of a boot camp operator to myself and you get the discipline and you do the eating and you do the working out and you and you lose the weight then it's easier it's easier you're lighter you're healthier you're younger you're less stressed but it takes that it takes this journey of life in order to give humans that opportunity we learned that this planet earth allows for free will you understand that this planet Earth allows for free will. And at one time, there was a different planet in this place that did not allow for free will. And it was too degenerative. It was a failed experiment. And that's why Earth volunteered and was chosen to be the birthplace of this evolution of human consciousness. And as much as it seems like it's not working because there's a lot of pain, it is working. It's a beautiful, beautiful place that you've come to celebrate. Thank you for that. Encouraging. Yes, we hope so. We're going to close the channel now with such gratitude we have to be able to have these kinds of interactions with you again. You were a channel for rooting the new configuration that is birthing the next phase of our peace mission. We are planning on being here throughout the summer. We hope that our words stir within you the realization of your own power, because that is where you will find all the answers of who you truly are. If you're not your thoughts and you're not your intuition or emotion and you're not your body feel that then who are you and then watch and be amazed namaste